hunting in Alaska is as big of an adventure as any man can get. Especially when you're one man going at it solo in the rugged mountain ranges looking for Dal sheep. That's exactly what my good friend Austin Manelik is doing in this remote part of Alaska. This is a dream hunt for anyone, and as an Alaskan resident, it's one that this lucky son of a gun gets to do every year. And hopefully one that I'll find myself on very soon. I'm back. Come up here, boy. Welcome to Mordor. I bet you want to see him, don't you? Boom. Look at that guy. I'll tell you this right now. I lose another big buck like that to these damn cameras. Patience is definitely a virtue that I have. More lazy now. This thing's a tank. It's a bad day right there. I'd like to introduce you to my good friend from Alaska, Austin Manelik. Austin and his close friends head up a small group of die-hard public land and do-it-yourself hunters that they call Mission Alaska. Spending as much time as he can with family and loved ones in the outdoors is what Austin's life has become all about. Learning what he now knows from his father and grandfather and sharing that knowledge with his wife and soon-to-be newborn son. The overall approach and appeal of what Mission Alaska is really appeals to me as a hunter and father myself. Their mission statement is simple, to inspire the woodsman in everyone, invigorating passion in the outdoors through real stories, photographs, and video. As a born and raised Alaska resident, Austin and his crew get to do hunts every year that those of us in the lower 48 can only dream about doing once or twice in a lifetime if we're lucky. I'm glad to be able to expand on their mission and share just one of Austin's solo adventures with you. And I hope that you enjoy the ups and downs, the quirky self banter, and the avalanche of emotions on this hunt as I did. All right, Brian, Mr. Turner over here, got his first goat. It's up there, directly behind us. So we just set up camp, and uh, now we got a nice tent, and hopefully a hot dinner to come back to. All right, let's go get this goat. Gourmet. It is gourmet. 
Where should I camp if, if the water's coming like that? Should I get up and yeah, on that? If the camp's coming, you don't need to get up and in there. Um, you just need to get, you know, you can see the vegetation here. There hasn't been water that's ran through this kind of vegetation in a long time. This is like one of your 10 year, 30 year floods is what wipes this out. That's why everything's low. Um, but uh, for wind, it gets windy here. Um, I would head towards a bluff like that the trees and I would just kind of get tucked in it uh, also one thing I like to do is maybe get positioned somewhere where I'm staring up into a valley maybe a valley I like because then I can actually have camp be cooking dinner but at the same time still be looking out because with your eyes once you adjust to the mountain you will see those sheep with your naked eye Brian soloed in a super cub at the beginning of the season and had already killed his ram for the year his work schedule wouldn't allow him to take any more days off from my hunt so, he was gracious enough to drop me for a solo mission of my own. The last thing that Brian said to me was, just make sure it's legal. I know that I'm in a good spot, and I know that if I'm patient enough and just stick to my game plan, that this is all gonna happen for me. All right, here we go. I just got left to do a solo sheep hunt. I'm on my own for the next 10 to 14 days. And so the hunt begins underneath the tarp. I'm gonna go set up my tent, hold tough, wait 24 hours, wake up, and hopefully find some rams. As you can see, I'm ready for the weather already. I got electrical tape around the barrel. And from here on out, I'm just gonna be as silent as I can. And hopefully, with all the hard work and all the prayers, that somebody's looking out for me up above. Uh, you know, my, my grandfather, he just passed um, Monday and I was already flying out and I couldn't make it to his funeral all the way in Pennsylvania, so. This one's for my granddad. And he'll be with me on the trip. <clears throat> Here we go. All right, I got the spotting scope set up. I just couldn't help myself. I'm supposed to be setting up camp. But I've already spotted five rams. I've worked so hard for this. And I would be not nowhere without my pilot and one of my best friends, Brian Turner. I've got goosebumps. This is honestly the happiest, most nervous, conflict of emotions that I've felt in a really long time and that's why I'm out here and that's why we do it because we want to feel something different and right now I'm just happy you might see some tears out of me and I haven't even pulled the trigger <laughs> got one ram right there he has a buddy with him but they're hiding and we also have Three rams right there, one of them is full curl. Be going after him tomorrow. You know, sheep aren't everywhere. But it seems like when you spot them, you start spotting a lot more. And about an hour ago, there was no sheep over there. And now there's an army of them. Whoever said solo sheep hunting could be so bad? Or so good? I've got a boar's head sandwich here. Mmm. With mayonnaise and honey mustard. And this is gonna fuel me up. But tomorrow, because tomorrow, I'm gonna go down there and get my second ram of my life. I feel like that's pretty substantial when I could be conserving food or letting a bear eat it. I'm gonna eat it first. Mm. So I packed heavy so I could eat good since I don't have two dudes here. My 
life ain't so bad out here, huh? Mm -hmm. a couple of Cheetos now. Let's get crazy. Mm -hmm. On this solo adventure, I needed this. My grandpa just passed, and uh, it was a pretty emotional time to be in the wilderness. It's not very safe to go out on a solo adventure in Alaska. In Alaska, you're very vulnerable and you're only as strong as your weakest hunting partner. I've got seven rams behind me. I think two, maybe three are legal. This is the first time I've ever seen anything like this in a non-permit area. So I think the full crow regulation by ADF and G is working. This is crazy. So what I'm going to do is, there's nowhere that I can really get up and go around the rams. It's just all too gnarly. The only way up is through this river drainage, which is why they're in here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put on my lights and try to get as close as I can. And hopefully they wander towards me. Being here is more than just a hunt. Being here is spiritual to me. It's being lost in the ether of this special place. These mountains make me feel born again. My grandpa, he's here with me. I can feel a shield, a cloak of invisibility. There's one thing that I want to do every year until I join my grandpa, and that's adventure for sheep in the mountains I call home. If I can do that, I'll die a happy man. So I just got my second ever ram, uh, and it wouldn't have happened without Brian Turner and all of my family and uh, my friends back home cheering me on. And my family let me come out here and do what I love. 
and uh, Brian Turner for being one of my best friends and um, dropping me off at a good location. Hey, take it when you can get it because it's uh, few and far between with big doll sheep. I want to give uh, a huge shout out to uh, my family, Jordan. Thank you very much for being the love of my life and allowing me to do what I love. Uh, and everybody else in my family, thank you for bearing with me. I know it's been a wild ride. And um, tell my friends, thanks for the support, guys. And I guess there's some fans out there? Question mark? Thank you for everything you guys do for us. This film is dedicated to my grandfather, Matt Bill. Sunday. Being able to hunt these sheep every year in Alaska and being an Alaskan resident, that's that's how I identify and that's who I am. If I didn't have that, I don't know where I'd be at. 20th. There it is. Clean that up. There we go. Alright, well, I'm going to break this up into two loads. I got the hide and the horns over there, some of the loose meat, and I'm going to take all the quarters and the rib meat and uh, all my stuff back to camp and then I'm going to come back up and get it. My dad always told me, it's not yours unless you pack it out, so here we go. And when I go out and I hunt all sheep, there is absolutely no question of who I am, the person I want to be, it is, it's all very clear. So. Hunting these sheep is, is spiritual to me. I believe Grandpa was there. He was all around me, and he, and he put this sheep right in front of me. I thank God and Grandpa for all my blessings. I got my headlamp in my pocket. I better get back to base camp. It's gonna get dark here soon. All right. Got a little bit of sleep, it's 7 a.m. And I'm moving back up the drainage to grab the cape, the horns, the back straps, and my spotting scope. It's just beautiful here. Just absolutely beautiful. I'm speechless, really. Whew, can't even talk right. All right, final pack out here. Going back down that drainage. Got the last of the loose meat already in the pack. I'm getting ready to give him his last ride. All right, last pack out here. I'm uh, about four miles away from the strip. Covered a few miles already. And uh, looking forward to getting home. This is one of my biggest goals of the year was to get a ram. And I uh, managed to do so with the help of a lot of my friends and family. And um, just couldn't be more excited and thankful to be here with a ram on my back. When that plane comes in to pick you up after a successful hunt, it's uh, very difficult to describe what a hunter goes through. When you have good friends like Brian Turner who base their life around flying and also hunting dog sheep, you have this like special connection. And Brian and I, when we first started hunting sheep together and started chasing critters together in the mountain, we realized like, all right, we've, we've reached this, this sweet spot in time where Brian's a really good pilot and I'm an okay videographer. We're both filming, we're both hunting, and we're both okay at it. Good mass. He flares out over full curl. So without the special bond with Brian where literally you can trust your life in somebody else's hands, not only to get you there safely, but when you venture out, being able to have the strength and the ability to take you 
out of the field back to transportation. That's huge when you have this like reliability and Brian provides this reliability and I do as well to him. I may not be able to fly a Super Cub but at least I can get us back to the strip. Mission Alaska is a lifestyle. It's the Alaska lifestyle that exemplifies do-it-yourself adventures and Mission Complete isn't necessarily just success, going out and catching a fish or going out and killing a ram. Mission Complete to me is going out, having a good time, learning something and coming back safely. That's a complete mission to me and, um, and that's what it's all about.